black IPA is a beer that looks like it's going to be one thing, but tastes and smells like something else entirely. And to help me with that aroma part, well, today I will be using a hop rocket. Hey, how's it going? I'm Martin Keane and I'm taking the homebrew challenge, which you may know by now is to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And I'm pretty excited about this week's IPA because it is such a contrast. You look at it and you think, well, this is going to be roasty, but it really shouldn't be. It should have a sort of a sweety maltiness to it. And then you sniff it and well, it's really going to smell of tropical fruits, citrusy fruits, which we're going to get through, through the hops. And because I really do want to emphasize the aroma in this beer, I'm going to try brewing this beer using a hop back. This is the Blickman Hop Rocket, and that will help infuse some hop aroma into my beer. Now I'll talk in a moment about the recipe that I'm using for this beer, but let's get it mashing. I'm gonna mash today at 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. Not forgetting the unmilled flake barley. Oh, this is this is already smelling delicious. All right, let's get this um, gonna mash for uh, uh, about an hour. Um, but actually, before that, there's just one other thing I want to check. Now, I've been using a pH meter to check that my mash pH is, is good. I have found that if I do exceed my mash pH, I generally get less efficiency. So. That's something I want to get on top of right away. And what I've been doing is I've just been taking this and then plunging it straight into here and getting a reading. And this does have temperature adjustment capabilities, but uh, only up to around 120 Fahrenheit, as was pointed out by several folks who watched uh, one of my previous videos. So I wanna check my pH and I have just started recirculating the mash. I'm going to use this little a measuring container. This is a one quarter cup metal measuring container. I was going to steal a sample uh, of the wort that's coming through the pump. Okay, that just came straight out of the spray nozzle. And what I'm going to do is measure this once it gets down to 120 Fahrenheit, which honestly I don't think will take very long. So right now it's showing as about 140, but let's just give it a minute and then take my measurement. Now time is a little bit of the essence here because this mash is not patiently waiting for me to get my pH levels right, it's already converting. So that's why we want to cool this down pretty quickly and if we are gonna make any adjustments, we wanna do it within the first five minutes or so of the mash for them to really take effect. Okay, that took a couple of minutes and I am at 120 now, which means I can take my pH reading. And it is reporting a pH of 5.6. So that's not terrible, but it is just a little bit high. So I am gonna add just a touch of lactic acid to try and bring that down a little bit. And given the size batch that I'm doing, a two and a half gallon batch, I only have four gallons of water in here, about two milliliters of lactic acid is probably gonna do the trick. 
All right, so leave that mash for about an hour to convert. While it's doing that, let's just talk a little bit about, well, what's in here. Now I'm gonna build a reasonably big beer here. You don't have to with this style, but I'm going to shoot for an original gravity of 1068. So uh, around about a 6.4% beer. Now here is how I'm going to get there. I'm going to start with just two row pale malt as my base malt, and that will form 72% of the grist. And then in addition to that, for the mouthfeel, I'm going to add some flaked barley at 7%. We also want a little bit of biscuity sweetness to the beer. I'm gonna use Munich One for that at 7%. And then just for a little bit of spiciness, I'm gonna add some rye, specifically caro rye at 7%. Then, yeah, we do need to address the color of this beer. It's gonna be quite dark, obviously. I'm going for a, uh, an SRM of 37, which is as dark as the Russian Imperial Stout that I brewed. And the way that I'm going to get there is I'm going to use Carafa Special 3, also at 7%. So let's take a look at the gadget du jour. This is a hop back. Specifically, it is from Blickman Engineering and it's the hop rocket. Now, what does a hop back do? Well, it adds hop aroma into your beer. And the way that it does that is it takes the hot wort from your beer, it infuses it with hops, the hop oils are extracted through that process and added into the wort and that will lead to hopefully a really aromatic beer. Now let's have a look at how this thing in particular works, it'll be my first time using it. And the first thing to talk about is the hops that you want to use because I use pellet hops for everything in my brewing, but it's not recommended to use pellet hops with a hop back, particularly this one, um, because it can clog, clog the thing up. So you're gonna want to use whole leaf hops. Well, that's what I have. I have a bag here, one pound bag of Cascade whole leaf hops, and oh, it smells good. It smells good. This is the smell that I really would be very happy to infuse into my beer. You can use up to three ounces of whole leaf hops in a hop back like this. I have measured out one ounce of hops here. And I mean, just look, one ounce of hops filled up this entire jug. I mean, it would barely cover the bottom if it were hop pellets. So it's kind of interesting to see the difference in volume. Now let's open this thing up and really show you how it works. Uh, from the most basic viewpoint, it has a port at the bottom and a port at the top. And we are going to send wort via a pump into the bottom here. It will be running up, infusing itself with the hops that are added and then come out of the top. And from here, we'll put this into a plate chiller and then into the fermenter. So the whole thing is held together by a clamp, which we can just unscrew. Okay. So that's the clamp off. And then in here, essentially, there's really two sets of components. We take this, this bottom part off here, and then in here as well, we have our little hop basket. And there we go. So these are all of the components of this hop rocket. What you'll do is you will put your hops into this basket here, and then there's just some wing nuts either side of this to keep this attached to this filter, which is at the top. And then at the bottom, we have another wider filter at the bottom here, um, an O-ring. And this is going to be used just to make sure that all of the work gets distributed evenly through the hot rocket. Hops-wise, this beer, it's gonna be quite hoppy. I'm looking for an IBU of around 76%. So I'm gonna start off with Magnum as my, my initial hop, going at the start of the bowl, nice clean hop for bittering. Um, then with 10 minutes to go, that's when I'm really gonna start focusing on these flavor and aroma hops. So I'll start with Citra. 
So Citra goes in with 10 minutes to go, and then I will add Amarillo with five minutes to go. And as I've already mentioned, I am using Cascade as my aroma hop in the hop back. If you are not using a hop back and you want to try to replicate this recipe, then I'd recommend adding some Cascade in at Flame Out. Now here is where the fun begins. Uh, I've reached the end of my boil, so I'm gonna stop the heat. And uh, apologize for the loud noise, that's my extractor fan running here. Um, I'm just gonna leave it running for a few more minutes to make sure there's not any, uh, any condensation coming back in because this is still steaming. Right, so I want now to take this wort and run it through my hop back, my hop rocket. And it's best to do it when the wort is very hot because that will ensure that we extract as much hop oil out of these hops as we can. So I've got another little wrinkle to this, which is I'm gonna ferment this under pressure. So this is a pressurized fermenter. It's a firm zilla. The, the advantage I think to that is it may mean that I get to keep a little bit more of the aroma in here by fermenting under pressure uh, that I might otherwise lose if I was just fermenting normally with, a, with an airlock and whatnot. So anything that's in here is gonna get kind of trapped in here, um, at least to a certain extent. So I thought I'd give it a try. So, first thing I need to do is sanitize my equipment. I've already sanitized this. I'm just gonna dump this in here. Now into the star sand, I'm gonna put anything that's in the hot rocket that is gonna to touch the wort. So, the O-ring, the bottom assembly, and the top assembly here just to make sure it's all sanitized. I think I said earlier that this top bit here, these filters that you put the hops in this little portion here. Um, that's what I thought, it's not the case at all actually. This is just used as a filter. So this is going in as it is. And at this point you add the hops in. So I do have one ounce of Cascade hops, which I'm just gonna pour over the top of this filter. Then I'm gonna put the O-ring on here and this and that, and then I'm just gonna clamp it down. I should do it. Okay, so now we need to go from my kettle into my pump, out from my pump and into the hot rocket. I'm stolen here, a little quick disconnect from my chiller, and I'm just gonna put it on the input to the hot rocket. This is just because my system has a quick disconnect coming out of the pump. Okay, so I can now connect this from the pump into the bottom here. Now when it comes out the top, I want to send it into my plate chiller. So the way that I'm going to do that is I have a hose. So this is just a piece of silicon hose with Blickman quick connects on either side of it. So I'm gonna screw on to here and onto my plate chiller. Then finally we need to go from the plate chiller out into my fermenter and I'm going to use this guy for that. Okay, turn that fan off, thankfully for all our ears. Uh, I think I am now ready to go. The last thing I did was I just hooked up this plate chiller to my faucet so I can run water through it at the same time. Let's give it a try. It's working. Okay, that should be everything. Boy, two and a half gallons sure looks kind of pathetic in here, doesn't it? I just had a look at the, the measurement on the side here. I've actually got less than two gallons in here. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, when I'm using my tilt hydrometer here, it's reporting that my gravity is 1073, 1074. I was going for 1068, so that sort of implies that my boil was a little bit too aggressive. I ended up boiling off a little bit more than I suspected. Um, but I think the other reason for the missing wort is, well, it's probably in this thing still. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is try and get it out. <laughs> 
this hasn't quite worked as I was expecting. What I was expecting to do was kind of just tip this from here into this. Um, what's actually happening is now that I've raised this, the wort is draining out of here and it's starting to fill up the kettle again. Yeah, there it goes. I've now cleared this thing out and it's all coming back into here. Huh. Well, let's get that into here. This is more like it. And that's got me pretty close back to two and a half gallons. Now, that might not be something worth worrying about if you're brewing a bigger batch, but that's quite a large percentage of work that was just stuck in the hot bracket. So I think this would have worked better had I had the hot rocket raised up um, or lowered, but not on the same level as everything else. I think that's kind of why everything got stuck in here and the pump wasn't pushing it through. Now I did add work that didn't go through my plate chiller into here, so this is probably reasonably warm again. Let's see. Yeah, it's 107 degrees Fahrenheit now. Um, rather than messing around with the plate chiller anymore, I'm just going to seal this up, put it in my chest freezer for a few hours, and that will cool it down to around pitching temperature of 68 Fahrenheit 20 Celsius, at which point I'll be adding in my yeast. This is my yeast. This is Northwest Ale, Yeast 1332, which I like because it's going to support both the maltiness of this beer and those fruity hops. I will ferment this under pressure at 15 psi. I will cold crash in here under pressure as well. I'll do a closed transfer to the keg under pressure. So I really don't want any of these hop aromas escaping any place. And uh, then we will give the beer a try. Well, it is time to taste the black IPA. I really like this style because you look at it and you're like, this is not an IPA. It's an IPA. Yeah, I agree. So what do you think about the color? I'm sorry, I'm still on the head of your beer because <laughs> why is mine not doing that? I don't know, you pour them. <laughs> well, maybe it's because it's the first pour. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, but mm. okay, anyway. Uh, look of it. This is actually like probably one of the darkest I've seen. Yeah. I can't see through it with a light extremely dark. Light does not want to go through it, does it? See all the bubbles there. Now I was most excited for the aroma of this beer because this one has used a hop back to add some extra aroma, but I don't know what I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> smell through this, which has now got bigger still. Yeah. Um, take your finger and go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, really fast. There you go, good. Okay. okay. I've never had a black IPA. I don't know what it's meant to smell like, but I'm pl actually pre pleasantly surprised. It smells kind of sweet with quite a bit of like malt and hop aroma to it. Mm. Yeah, smell mine still. Oh, yours smells a bit more. Um, yeah, because, yeah. How about we just drink some and then we'll come back to the smell. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right. All right, taste wise, straight up coffee. Um, but what? good coffee. You have this weird thing about coffee. I can't taste any sort of you don't roastiness taste at all. Any roastiness. Like the slightest bit. You think it's really roasty? I don't think it's really roasty, but I think that I shouldn't always agree with no, you. No, I think what's interesting is that you generally pick up on more roasted flavors more strongly than I do, which is probably because you generally don't gravitate that way. Drink that yeah. sort of stuff anyway, like just not out, outside of beer, like coffee and those sort right. of dark drinks, you don't, don't drink them. chocolate, anything like right. that. Right, so if there's any any of that sort of note in the beer, you're gonna it really pick it up. Sticks out, yeah. Uh, whereas I'm down in cold brew coffee all the time, and <laughs> I guess I don't taste it so much in the in the beer. But yeah. Yeah, smelling the hops too. Yeah, it looks can be deceiving, so. Mm. I think, yeah, black IPA looks can be deceiving. What a great tagline for that beer. <laughs> I think that's exactly it. It's, it's not bad though. It, it's not like I'm not gonna drink it like when we're done, so. That's a pretty low bar to be fair. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do have some sort of standards. <laughs> PBR? Okay. 
Well, as usual, if you'd like, have a go at this yourself. The recipe's in the description. Also, you can pick up the ingredients at Atlantic Brew Supply. And uh, yeah, this is a fun one to make, especially with the hop back and adding the hops in afterwards. We're going to stick with IPAs uh, for a little while more and uh, going to go to another color IPA, which perhaps you have not had either. So mm. we'll see about that next week. But until then, cheers. cheers. <laughs>